Bueno, ahora recibimos a Máximo Candela, que hablará sobre la geolocalización de infraestructuras. Muchas gracias. Good morning, everybody. So, uh, my name is Massimo Candela. I work for the Research and Development Department of uh, RIPE NCC. Uh, what I basically do there is uh, uh, we do measurement uh, uh, analysis and we collect data about the internet in general. We do experiments and we also produce uh, public available data sets and tools for operators. And today I want to present to you uh, how to do uh, infrastructure geolocation with uh, our project RIPE IP map. So uh, let's start with some reasons uh, why we do this. Uh, well, we, we, we got many questions in the years about uh, IP geolocations uh, uh, to our meetings, by emails, including this meeting, including during the LACNIC meeting, people are asking a uh, question like uh, why my IP geolocation is wrong, uh, why I'm not geolocated at all, where do they find this information, and, uh, and especially the question that we care more is what RIPE NCC is going to do about it. Uh, RIPE NCC is one of the five uh, regional internet registry like LACNIC, so we actually we are not a geolocation provider. So as also the second link uh, uh, states, uh, our executive board after so many questions uh, did a statement, RIPE NCC is not a geolocation provider. Uh, we did in the past introduce uh, a geoloc field in our database, but it was not a success. So um, the, the, the problem is uh, this geolog field is uh, rarely used by the uh, resource holders, it's not enforced, and it's sometimes they forget about it, it's not up to date, so actually it's, uh, it's such a not reliable uh, source of uh, geolocation information that it's not so used. And, uh, but at the same time, for, especially for research purposes, also just in our department, but also uh, operators and researchers outside, um, we need to find a way to geolocate infrastructure, okay? So there are many uh, geolocation providers, um, but um, this, um, what we are trying to do is not to geolocate end user, what we try to do is to geolocate infrastructure. So we are playing on a total different uh, field, let's say. And it's important, especially when you want to do uh, analysis of internet event that you know and you understand where actually the various components on the network are. So what we try to do is uh, why, since we have the knowledge, the res uh, research power to, uh, to do it, why we don't use our tools to create uh, a kind of, uh, I mean, a new research project that actually does automatic geolocation and allows also the user this is an important part to correct that information just uh, by clicking without sending emails that maybe nobody will ever reply or things like this. So what, this is what uh, we try to achieve. Um, we also uh, understand that IP geolocation is actually extremely uh, difficult. It's really a hot topic and a lot of researchers are working on it. So uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel or anything. So we would like to actually uh, cooperate with them and uh, get the best out of it, the state of the art in terms of IP geolocation and uh, try to put all these efforts together and um, offering them also a, a, a platform and a way to cooperate. And while we were doing this, we also noticed that even internally we were using various kind of uh, geographical uh, information sources. So maybe this data set was fitting this purpose and other data set and other purpose. So we also try to unify it uh, and create uh, an open data set based on other open data set anyway that's publicly available. So that's why um, ipmap.ripe.net uh, was born. Um, I have to do a small disclaimer. I presented uh, this uh, project with another name in the past. Uh, this is because of, uh, we have to change it for legal reason, let's say. And uh, this is the new name, I'm sorry for uh, confusion. 
So what is ipmap.ripe.net? Uh, if you go on the website, ipmap.ripe.net, you will find uh, basically a map <laughs> with a text box. If in that text box you type an IP address, we, pu we put on the map a dot and we tell you where uh, we think that IP address is. Uh, and if you don't like that, you can actually click and uh, change that information. And while you do that, you are crowdsourcing the location and everybody can enjoy of this uh, new information. It's uh, an API where you can actually uh, query even for multiple IP address. Uh, of course, this API is the one actually in the background of uh, the web application. And uh, uh, also an API to uh, send this information to us. And the last point is a web application uh, to visualize trace routes uh, on a map. Okay, so not only you can, uh, we give you, I mean, you give us an IP and we put it on the map, but you can see entire trace routes. And I want to focus on the last, uh, on the last point because it's a nice uh, use case and I can do a demo about it. So um, where you can uh, find this uh, demo that I'm going to do. So uh, probably some of you already know about uh, Ripe Atlas is a measurement platform. I'm not gonna spend too much words about it, but essentially it's a measurement platform that allows you to do uh, measurement like trace route and ping and other kind of things. We, we, we care about trace route now. So what basically you do is you select some probes, some hardware devices that we have distributed in the world and you tell them, okay, do a trace route to my target. That's to make it uh, simple. And if you go in atlas.ripe.net, on the left side, on the menu, you will find measurement. And uh, you, there is uh, all tabs about measurement. You click on trace route. You select one of the trace route. In this case, I selected uh, trace route to wikipedia.org. And there is a tab called IP map. In this one, you will find uh, trace route displayed on a map. So while you click on that tab, the uh, measurement will uh, load. Uh, we can close this, and uh, if we click on the uh, small icon on the right, uh, we will zoom on where actually things are going on on the map. All the orange dots are uh, the uh, IP addresses of the trace route that we were able to geolocate, and each color line is a different trace route. If we, now I'm hovering this orange trace route and uh, in that uh, segment it says five hops, but we actually don't see five hops now there. This means that we were not able to uh, put in the map where the other IP were, or at least not for now, not yet. While we are talking, uh, the geolocation engines in background are trying to geolocate the IP addresses and they will appear on the map. Like in this case, it appeared and the trace route got updated. In this case, Geneva and Frankfurt, uh, they were, um, we were able to geolocalize them. If you click on the trace route, you will find all information about the trace route, like all the ops, where they are geolocated, and a small green pie chart that tells you how much we are uh, sure about that geolocation. And uh, on the left side of this panel, there is a trace route with the IP address, round trip time, normal trace route, just in a more visual way, and I, uh, autonomous system uh, lookup. And if you click on uh, uh, the geolocations, you can see the reverse DNS also, and you can actually confirm or edit the geolocation yourself. If you confirm it, uh, um, basically um, in background, you are sending us uh, this information and that uh, geolocation get reinforced for that IP. Now, I selected this trace route uh, that from Rome in Italy to Amsterdam, uh, because I'm from Rome, so I more or less can understand how uh, things can go there. And I see that in this map, uh, the second hope is uh, in Terni, close to Rome. And I don't believe actually that from Rome to Amsterdam we passed through Terni because Terni is really famous for, they do really good bread, but not really famous for uh, internet infrastructure. And so the, the, the thing that I do, I just uh, click on Terni and I see that the reverse DNS says RM, so Rome. So that in that case we did a wrong geolocation and I crowdsourced the new one. And when I apply that, when I submit that, 
the tracer will get updated on the map, and all the other people receive also the same information. So all this nice uh, demo and UI, they are actually based on uh, a set of API that they do the uh, real geolocation. So um, if you go on ipmap.ripe.net slash API, you will get a list of endpoints that you can use. Uh, in this presentation, we will focus only on the locate endpoint. So it's basically ipmap.ripe.net slash API slash v1 slash locate, and you put the IP address that you want to geolocate. And uh, at, we, on this part, we, on this URL, we added at the end best. Now I'm gonna say why. Um, when you uh, do this, you will get the best geolocation we were able to So this is our geographical uh, data set that is based on other third party open data sets anyway. And this is also accessible and free to use. And uh, you will find three letters, country code, two letter country code, city names, uh, geometry, and all kind of information. And there is this thing here that is a score. So for now, I, I will tell you what it is, the score in a bit. Uh, so this is basically the best geolocation for this IP address that we were able to calculate. If you remove best at the end, you will get a list of possible geolocations. Each of these geolocations will have a different score. So this is the, basically the difference. When you put best, we give you the one with the highest score. So only one. So what is the score? Uh, as, as I said, we actually cooperate with academia or with uh, other projects, and uh, some of these projects, for example, they focus on a subset of the IP space, or maybe they work only uh, if you try to geolocate ANICAS, or they are specific for uh, geolocating ANICAS. Others are instead able to remove false positive and things like this. So what we want to do is actually to have self-contained, completely separated, geolocation approaches that they run in parallel to provide geolocation. And um, so uh, we call this self-contained component uh, geolocation engines. They are here. They all, they, they all run in parallel. They don't know about each other. They get an input, the IP address that you want to geolocate, and our uh, geographical data set that we called worlds. So they get basically all of them the same input and they provide the same output format in a sort of map reduce fashion, let's say. So they provide basically each of them a list of key values where the key is the uh, location, a city, for example. And the value is a score, the score that we were talking before. And uh, in the end, there is a reduce uh, step where we actually uh, take all this list and we come up with a final list and we basically sum the score. Um, while we do this, uh, uh, we can test uh, our accuracy, and uh, if we don't like it, or we, if we discover that some of these engines is less accurate, we can actually tune the score factor that they have. Um, so different engines, and if you want to see uh, what the single engine uh, produces, so before the reduce, so if I go back, if I want to understand what is this part? I mean, what I get before to uh, reduce the list, I can just uh, append partials at the end of uh, the query. And if I do that, I get a, a list of all the uh, engines that we have with the single list that they produce, and I can decide to, for example, don't use some of them or to calculate the score in a different way. So, um, as I said, one of the uh, approaches that we wanted to go is to have, uh, I mean, not something only in the database that maybe works only in our region uh, and has to be updated manually, but we want to have a completely different research platform that actually is able to automatically geolocate and uh, also allow people to uh, provide manually this information. Uh, so the automatically uh, geolocation is based uh, on various approach. Uh, the main one is uh, RIPE Atlas. So we use the RIPE Atlas platform. 
uh, Ripe Atlas is this uh, measurement network that has more than, now has around 11,000 between probes and anchors, uh, uh, hardware devices distributed in the world. In the world. And uh, so the, the, the probes are the small device on the left, and you can host one at home. Uh, you apply online, we ship it. The big one on the right are instead uh, one unit uh, servers that we actually place usually in IXPs, ISP, and uh, data center in general. And uh, the map shows the coverage that we have. So each of that dot is one of these hardware device. With this platform, we can actually, when you query, when you want to know where an IP address is, we can actually do latency measurement towards that IP address, and we can more or less understand where that IP is. Uh, this is the uh, a basic explanation. So imagine that there is a probe, uh, and there is a, we query for an IP address, and a probe in the center of Milan says, oh, I reached this in around two milliseconds, so I can more or less uh, draw a radius and understand more or less where it is. So with what we provide in output is actually a list of possible cities. Um, so every time you query for an, an IP address that we didn't see before, uh, we uh, launch a, a ripe atlas measurement, a ping measurement to it, and uh, we use SpeedingDB and also uh, BGP data because we collect all, also BGP data uh, with the RIS uh, platform. Uh, we use that to uh, check to get a subset of the possible source. I said we have 11,000. We cannot just every time do a 11,000 uh, ping. It would stress a uh, lot the platform and also a lot the target. We only get a measurement when they are less than 10 milliseconds because we believe that uh, more than 10 milliseconds is uh, basically uh, useless, is too much, uh, the radius is too big. And we, in the list that we do, we boost the score based on um, information about the specific city and how much infrastructure there is uh, according to our data sources. I repeat, we focus on infrastructure geolocation. That's also why we do this. Um, so that's why we need uh, RIPE Atlas coverage. So for the RIPE Atlas coverage, if you want to help us and host one of these devices, uh, I'm gonna be here for the entire conference and I can also show you demo and whatever, but even better, you can ask to my colleague, uh, Michela Galante. I, I know that you, if she's not dancing, you can probably approach her and ask, <laughs> and ask her about RIPE Atlas and uh, she will be happy to show you also and help you with uh, hosting probes and anchors. Um, to close this, uh, some future work. Um, something that uh, we would like to do is actually interact more uh, with uh, RIR and work with the other RIR to um, basically uh, offer more uh, features for resource holders. So something like instead of, uh, I mean, if you are logged in as a resource holder in uh, your uh, uh, RIR portal or anyway, or in our portal, you can actually uh, set uh, yourself uh, the location and uh, be authorit authoritative for it. And um, we want to introduce also more engines, including, for example, a reverse DNS, uh, and uh, we will work, for example, with KEDA to uh, do this, um, and, of course, improve uh, the quality of the output. We are already collecting metadata, and I think something that is really missing in this presentation is some slide about numbers, about our accuracy. But um, there is a reason for this. We don't, I mean, we want to do what we did basically with others. We want to do, we want that the research community, and we are working also for, with them for this, they come up with numbers about our accuracy. And, but we are still getting metadata, and we will publish some KPI for the service evaluation in general. And that's all, so if you have questions, that's the right moment. Hello, Masmu. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> Ricardo Patara here. I, I, I think it's a very uh, good project. <clears throat> I appreciate you, you bring this information here. I have two questions. Uh, you, you mentioned at the beginning that there will be a web interface for people to update the information in the case they, they find uh, some, 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 something wrong with uh, the, the IP geolocation. Is, is this 
something that is ready and uh, is, is it open to anyone or do I need a, an, an account to write uh, Atlas system? Okay, no, um, we have for now open, completely open, the uh, crowdsource. Uh, but for now, the only one that is available is a single IP. So you cannot crowdsource entire prefixes, for example, for now. Uh, we have half ready uh, the, um, 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 if you, a, another approach where you are actually logged in as a resource holder, and in that case, you would be able to crowdsource, for example, prefixes and, uh, and let's say, be an authority for it in a way that other people crowdsourcing that information can actually not change uh, your, or, or anyway, uh, your information would be more. Uh, uh, but we want to introduce this in a more, um, it requires a bit more time because we actually, we want to avoid to do the same error of the geolog attribute where actually we were adding this attribute, but few people using it and, or maybe you put the geolocation after you forget. Uh, so we want to do it that we actually, for example, send emails in case we believe that three years later the geolocation is not anymore accurate because the latency doesn't match or things like this. So it will require a bit more. For now is the public crowdsourcing is available. You don't need to be logged in at all. And uh, it's just for single IP address. After we take all the data and we do our calculation about the, what we believe is uh, correct. Good. Uh, the second question you mentioned at the, the, the end of the presentation, future work, you, you mentioned some collaboration with RIRs. Can you give more details? Is, is this uh, to process the stats file, RIR published every day or something, something else? Uh, so, sorry, uh, I think you mentioned at the, the end of the presentation there will be some collaboration with RIRs, and uh, the question is: uh, Is it something like to process the stats file each RIR publish every day or something else? Um, so, um, the thing we would like to do is uh, uh, basically that um, we would like to have a way to identify essentially the users. Uh, that they are resource holders and identify which resource they have in a way that when they crowdsource, actually we take into consideration that information with a higher score. Uh, so that's essentially what we want to do. And uh, we are working on this. I, I, um, I mean, the single RIR will at some point, if they won't come up with uh, public information about uh, when this is gonna be ready, but we are actually working on this. Okay, good. And uh, yeah. just to, to add something in, uh, that's the true in APNIC and also in LACNIC region, we have RIRs and NIRs and some of the information about uh, users responsible for some set of IPs are in the NIR database, so there might be a need for a collaboration with NIR too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Maximo. Uh, a remote participant named Ricardo Plais asked from Colombia if EVP map will be enabled for EPV6. Uh, if, if, if this is EPV6 enabled? Uh -huh. Yes, it is EPV6 enabled. And uh, the second question, if there is any special distinction for the content infrastructure distribution or CDN? Um, so, no, actually what we do, okay, um, as I said, we have different uh, engines and we have for now uh, an engine that is specific for uh, Anycast, but we don't do uh, a s differentiation between, uh, or at least for now, between CDN or other. I mean, we just, uh, we are able to match Anycast and our API is able to provide you, um, for example, uh, if you query for uh, Quad 8 of uh, Google DNS and, uh, we give you a list of possible locations where we think the instances are there. But if you query and you, and you put uh, a post, you post the information about, for example, a trace route or your IP address, we try to give you the closest instance. So there is actually also this feature about Anika. So we can actually distinguish between instances. Thank you. Thank you very much, Massimo. Bueno, ahora recibimos. Thank you.